In this video, I'm going to debunk the top five most common myths that I've heard people say about creating a smart home. And maybe you're thinking about building or creating your own smart home, but you're not sure how convenient it actually is, how secure is it, and if it's even worth it. Myth number one is the biggest reason that prevented me from building my own smart home. Starting off with myth number five is that a smart home is not easy to use. And in some ways, I would actually agree with this as well. With multiple apps to use, various hubs that you may need, it can just be so overwhelming and confusing to know where to even start or how to get your home set up. And when you're building your own smart home, you want something that's easy to use, not just for you, but for anybody else in your home as well. So how do you build an easy Easy to use smart home well it starts off with the ecosystem or the platform there's many different ecosystems available like Amazon Google and my personal favorite Apple's HomeKit. each ecosystem offers different products or features that you may need the Apple home app organizes your devices into tiles and makes it simple to view what devices are on to control say the brightness of a smart bulb and to view camera footage of security cameras if you have multiple Apple devices then the home app works beautifully on other iOS devices you can control your devices from either your phone, iPad, computer, or even your watch. So no matter which device you use, like an iPhone or even a Mac, you'll be able to control your smart home. Now, smart home has to be easy for not just you, but for anybody else to use as well. And Apple allows you to share all the smart devices in your home with somebody else. So your family members or anybody else in your home is gonna be able to control your lights or your smart lock as well. But unfortunately, there's not a way to limit what rooms or devices that people have access to, which can be an issue if you have kids and want them to control only specific devices and not have the ability to control all the devices in your smart home. You could also use physical buttons, which is my favorite and makes it incredibly easy for anybody to control the smart devices in your home. Like the Akara mini switch, which only works with controlling HomeKit devices and scenes, and with a single click can turn on the lights and a double click can turn off the lights. And this is great if you have guests coming over and don't know what any of your device is called and just want to turn on some lights. The flick button is another great option that does the same thing, but also can control Amazon and Google devices. Now, a smart home is great when it works, but sometimes it doesn't always work like you want it to. And that leads us to myth number four, and that is a smart home is not reliable. So what makes a smart home not reliable? Well, one of the biggest reasons comes down to slow Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is the backbone and the core of a smart home. If your Wi-Fi is slow and you don't have a modern router with wide coverage and fast speeds, then this will often lead to devices being slow to respond or not responded in general, losing connection and going off offline or automations not running. You'll want a router that's Wi-Fi 5 at least. Wi-Fi 6 is the best as Wi-Fi 6 is designed specifically for a smart home. I use the Euro 6 in my smart home and I really like it. It's a mesh network, meaning that you can have multiple points in different rooms of your house to have strong coverage everywhere throughout your home. Plus, the Euro 6 has a crucial feature that is key to any smart home, but more on that later on. Another reason why a smart home might not be reliable is how devices connect. Without getting too tech Technical, all of your devices will connect over the internet, but there are different ways on how exactly they connect. The most common way is through Wi-Fi, which means that it will connect to your router like a regular phone or a tablet would. However, by doing this, it can, but not always, congest your network and slow down your Wi-Fi if you have a lot of devices. And one of the oldest ways that a device can connect is through Bluetooth. Bluetooth has a shorter range and is the slowest to respond. So I would avoid using devices that connect over Bluetooth, but instead I would recommend using Zigbee or Thread which are both much faster and much more reliable. Some popular brands that use Zigbee are Philips Hue and Acara. Now these devices do require a Zigbee hub and a Zigbee hub creates its own network separate from your main network that all your devices will connect to. And these hubs or bridges also expose the devices that are connected to it to ecosystems like HomeKit, Amazon, or Google. Then there's Thread, which is the newest connection type and currently only works with devices that support HomeKit, which is similar to Zigbee in that it has fast response times and long battery life and thread compatible devices do require a bridge but what makes it different from zigbee is that it only requires a homepod mini or the newest apple tv 4k to act as the hub zigbee and thread devices tend to be the most reliable and are rock solid when it comes to staying connected smart home myth number three is that a smart home is not worth it or it's not very useful and this is a fair myth because you definitely want to get the most out of your smart home and you want to find something that works best for you here are some useful ways that i use my smart home 
film and how it's changed my life. Hopefully these ideas will inspire you and give you some creative ideas that you can try. I use indoor and outdoor cameras and this helps to see who is at my house without being home and being able to view past motion footage even when I'm not at home. I also use smart lights so I or my wife can see which lights are on in the house and turn them on or off. We can change the colors if we want to, all without having to get up. And with a motion sensor, my lights will automatically turn off whenever there is no motion in a room for five minutes. Now, you could just flip the switch to turn the lights off, but by using a motion sensor, I don't have to worry about that. It does everything automatically. And the device that I use most often in my smart home is the Acara Wireless Mini Switch. I talked about this earlier in the video, but it's a tiny button that can control HomeKit devices and run scenes. And I have many of these scattered around my house. I have one on my nightstand. Whenever I double press it, it runs a shutdown scene that turns off a majority of my smart home. So I don't have to go around my house seeing which lights are on and then having to turn them off. This button will turn off everything in the entire house. This single button can do everything for me. And I use one near my front door. So whenever I leave the house, I will single press the button and this turns off all the devices in my smart home. So I can press this button and I'd be on my way. Automations are a great way to take your smart home to the next level and can save you time by automatically doing the tasks that you do most often for you. Some of my favorite automations are having my lights turn on automatically whenever I open up a door. This way, I don't have to look for a light switch in the dark. One of the biggest myths that I often hear from people who are wanting to start creating their own smart home is myth number two. And that is that a smart home is not safe and that you are giving up your privacy. Especially when it comes to smart cameras. You know, who has access to my footage? What does a company do with all my data whenever I create an account? And these are all valid concerns and something that you should be aware of when buying any kind of smart device. You can have a smart home and protect your privacy as well. And there are a couple ways to do this. And the most important way is by having a strong Wi-Fi password. A strong Wi-Fi password will protect unwanted access to all of your personal data and your devices that are on your network. Think of a Wi-Fi password like a key to a house. You wouldn't give your key to your house to everybody that you know, only to select people because you are trying to protect what's inside the house. Another great way to protect your privacy is by getting a HomeKit secure router. A HomeKit secure router will give you an extra layer of protection that will give you control over what devices can and cannot access on your network. There are multiple restriction options in the home app to protect not only your entire network, but also the other devices that are on your network. Another great way to protect your privacy is buying products from well-known brands. Brands that have been around the longest are well-known for a reason and typically have the strongest level of privacy. Apple is known for their strong privacy. And in fact, they have a higher standard and a more intense certification process to have devices work with HomeKit than being Alexa or Google certified. When it comes to smart cameras, Apple has the highest level of privacy with HomeKit Secure Video, which is Apple's cloud recording and will encrypt motion footage from the last 10 days on your HomeKit hub, then securely upload it to your iCloud account. A paid iCloud storage plan is required, but you may already have one if you pay for extra iCloud storage and recordings will not count against your iCloud storage plan. And only you and the people that you share your cameras with will have access to the live camera footage and the past recordings. And what's even better is that Apple does not have any access to your smart cameras or any of your smart devices in your smart home. If you want to take this a step further, then oftentimes companies will have a physical way to enable privacy. With smart cameras, companies have an added way to physically cover the lens. The Acara G3 camera lens will roll back and turn off so it will not see any Thing. And this will give you a visual reassurance that nobody can see you or see your footage. Now you could always just unplug the smart camera, but keep in mind that if you want to view your footage or view the live feed remotely, then you will have to remember to plug the camera back in. And the next smart home myth is actually the biggest reason that prevented me from building my own smart home. But First, a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. I've been watching a really informative class called Document Your Life, Four Methods to Live More Intentionally by Nathaniel Drew. And one method he talks about specifically is journaling. And journaling has many health benefits like reducing stress, improving memory, and boosting creativity. And Skillshare is a great place to learn a new skill that will match your goals and interest. And the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description box will get a free one month trial of Skillshare. And a huge thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. And the most common myth that I've heard people say whenever they're wanting to create their own smart home is that it's just too expensive. I actually believe this myth for a very long time and it's the biggest reason that prevented me from starting a smart home. And after doing some research, I found out that it's not expensive as most people think 
and it could actually be affordable. And you do not have to upgrade your home to a smart home all at once. You can do it over time. I've been slowly upgrading my home into a smart home over the last five years. Now the pricing of the device will vary by the brand, the type of the device, and the ecosystem that the device will work with. But oftentimes, a smart device will work with all three smart assistants. So you can buy one and then you can choose which assistant to use. Devices that work with HomeKit tend to be a lot more expensive than devices that just work with Amazon and Google. And this is because any device that works with HomeKit, it has to go through an extensive process and be certified by Apple. And this costs the company much more to do this than to get a device to say work with Amazon or Google. And a smart home does not have to have a lot of devices. You can use however many or however little that you would like. Whatever works for you. One of my favorite brands that works with all assistants is Acara. And they have a wide range of smart devices like cameras and sensors. And it's actually one of the most reliable brands that I've ever used. The devices connect over Zigbee via an Acara hub, which is called the parent, which means very fast alerts and response times. Each of the hubs will offer different features like a camera, a hardware connection, or a security system. The child devices like sensors and other devices are very affordable, so it's very easy to quickly start upgrading your smart home. Natively, the Acara child devices don't work with HomeKit or any other smart assistant, but the Acara hub acts as a bridge to allow the devices to work with HomeKit and other assistants. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, and here's how you can create an awesome smart home for only a hundred bucks. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.